Hi everyone, I'm Stephen Lecce, I'm Ontario's Minister of Education. Uh, today I'm very proud and pleased to be joined by Dr. Upton Allen, who is the Head of Infection Disease at SickKids. And before we get started, I wanted to thank all the parents who have sent many questions uh, to many leading health institutions, including SickKids, to the Ministry uh, and to your local health authorities. We want you to be armed with the best information to keep you, your children, our families and our schools safe. So with no further ado, Dr. Allen, thank you for your time. I want to get straight into these questions that many moms and dads have asked us. The first of which is what can parents do um, at home to keep their child safe while they're at school? Thank you, Mr. Minister. It's a pleasure to be here. One way of preparing children for school uh, is to talk to them about the coronavirus, what it is, how it is transmitted, and what can be done to prevent one from catching COVID or to transmit COVID to others. Um, in, indeed, there are several children's books that are now available online that parents can use to help prepare kids for school. Um, and in fact, um, some of these books can be downloaded for free. Information can also be provided or obtained um, from uh, community health clinics, uh, as well as websites of Public Health, the Public Health Agency of Canada, and of course, the Ministers of Health and Education. And Dr. Allen, you know, just in the context of symptoms, what should parents be looking for? And how do you differentiate between, you know, a common cough or a cold and COVID-19? The virus that causes COVID-19 can cause symptoms that are really difficult to distinguish from the common cold in children. Uh, in, in fact, COVID-19 in children can also present with gastrointestinal symptoms like diarrhea and unexplained vomiting. Uh, what we often say is that if your child has new onset of respiratory or gastrointestinal symptoms, it is important to contact your doctor or healthcare provider so that a, a decision can be made about the need for COVID testing or a testing for other viral illnesses. Of course, uh, if a child is unwell in other ways, uh, for example, the child has a fever, new onset of fatigue or, or body aches, uh, parents should contact their healthcare provider. Uh, loss of taste and smell in older children uh, and adolescents may be seen in cases of COVID. And, you know, for parents with younger children, I can appreciate there's a, uh, an additional level of angst for them. How can they speak to their kids, uh, uh, you know, age appropriately about how to, uh, you know, abide by and follow the protocol and keep themselves safe in the context of as they go into the playgrounds and return to school in a, in a few short days? Yes, it, it is important to uh, uh, reassure children that COVID 19 is usually a mild illness in the vast majority of children and parents should take time to have a an age-appropriate conversation with children some of the books um, on covid uh, that have been written uh, can be of help talk to children about the virus and how it is transmitted mention that there are things that can be done to prevent the risk of uh, spreading covid explain to them about the use of masks, proper hand hygiene and physical distancing, among other measures. And Dr. Allen, we know that multiple layers of prevention are critical to combating, the, uh, to combating this, this virus. Could you just walk us through those foundational points, the main elements that have allowed Canada and Ontario to help uh, you know, reduce the risk? I, I would remind uh, parents that it does require a package or a bundle of measures, as you've alluded to, as opposed to any single strategy. And, and indeed, Mr. Minister, I often leave parents with a mnemonic that I refer to as stop and plan, S-T-O-P-N, plan, that captures that uh, bundle of measures or layers of measures. And number one is the S, stay home if you're you're ill. So if your child is ill, stay home. The T relates to touching. Touching other kids' supplies or equipment is discouraged. 
it all relates to observing the surroundings and uh, in, this, in the context of schools, for example, parents uh, should be reassured that schools will check out the environment, uh, including washrooms, uh, before letting the kids use the facilities. And commonly touched equipment and surfaces will be cleaned uh, frequently. And then the P relates to physical distancing, which is really important um, as recommended. The N um, is a never, never share food uh, and drink. And this is really important. Um, and then the next P relates to protective equipment, um, non-medical masks or face coverings as recommended. The L relates to uh, lots of hand hygiene. Uh, and, and this really speaks to practicing proper hand hygiene measures, ensuring also that frequently touched surfaces are sanitized and have lot, lots of hand sanitizers and wipes around. The A uh, relates to avoid touching mouth, eyes, face. It's difficult for young children, but parents would really try to reinforce that as often as they can. And the end is, uh, is important, and that relates to um, networking among parents. This is good to share information and to encourage and foster positive interactions. So that's the stop and plan approach that I often use to convey information to parents and, and that they can use to remember, remember the bundle of measures. Dr. Allen, you um, and many others, including the Chief Medical Officer of Health, have spoken about the importance of keeping the uh, community transmission risk low and making sure that those uh, COVID numbers remain low in our province in order to enable kids to go to school. Do you want to just maybe send a message to the broader public, to everyone listening, particularly those youngsters, as we see younger people's numbers rising, why it's important uh, to do our part to adhere to public health advice and to not lose sight of the incredible gains we've made as a society and as a country. Thank you very much. That's a really important question. Uh, it, it's really important uh, to remember that what happens in schools in terms of the level of COVID activity uh, reflects what's happening in the community at large. And, and in fact, the homes as well, um, as part of that broader um, uh, community setting. So keeping COVID transmission at a low level in the community is really important so that there isn't a spillover effect on schools. And so we can all pay, play our part to ensure that we follow the various measures that have been recommended to reduce the community transmission of COVID, the uh, physical, social distancing, the hygiene measures, masks, among others, staying home if we're ill. These are all very important to reduce uh, the level of uh, COVID activity in the community so that uh, we do not have a spillover effect on schools. And I know that those uh, preventative measures, those layers of prevention are well in place, working closely with public health. Uh, I really want to thank you, Dr. Allen, for providing uh, your advice uh, and counsel to millions of parents who are looking for it. Uh, and I really want to express thanks to you and to Sick Kids for all that you do in our community and for our country's children and helping them uh, providing some of the best uh, pediatric medicine in the world. So we're grateful for the work you do. I'm grateful, Dr. Allen, for your time and for your wisdom and a message to Ontario parents that will continue to be there for you, arm you with the right information and know that together uh, we will get through this. So thank you again.